Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both, joined by Derek Young as we get ready for uh, another tough day in, in Wildcat land. We, we thought yesterday was a little bit tough. You wake up on a Wednesday after a big win against Villanova. No time to celebrate because your offensive coordinator, one of the best players in K-State football history, is leaving you for Texas A&M. So Colin Klein is gone and uh, a mad dash has begun. And everybody's like, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. Like, you lose this talented offensive coordinator. He is our guy. What happens with Avery Johnson? People were already in meltdown mode. And then things somehow found a way to get worse as the day wore on. Uh, the noise around the Naquan Tomlin situation had started to rise considerably Tuesday. And it you know, kind of hit a peak on Tuesday night when there were we want Naquan chants during the Villanova game. And... Everything else that went on with it, social media-wise and behind the scenes, there was even a protest on campus yesterday in front of the president's residence trying to free Naquan uh, that Naquan Tomlin himself even showed up to. Uh, I saw that video from the K-State Collegian. That, I mean, that's just an all-time move right, right all there. <laughs> yeah, by Naquan Tomlin. And it all resulted in a statement being sent out last night at 6.40 p.m., from Gene Taylor, Gene Taylor, and uh, that was in air quotes for those of you not watching on the YouTube. And it essentially resulted in Naquan Tomlin being dismissed from the basketball team. The official language in it was, while we cannot share the specifics that have led to this outcome due to the reasons stated above, K-State Athletics can now share that Naquan Tomlin will no longer be able to continue with the K-State men's basketball team this decision was not made lightly by me, but it is the decision warranted by the circumstances that brought it to bear. So K-State will not get Naquan Tomlin back at all this season. And there's obviously a basketball element to this to d discuss, but where a lot of people are trying to connect the dots and mend some confusion comes from how did we get to this point where Naquan Tomlin, who had been indefinitely suspended since the start of the season, and it seemed like would come back at some point, was doing things to come back, is no longer a part of the team. What changed where Tuesday night he is in the crowd with the team celebrating after the win over Villanova, looking like he's having an awesome time and still a very engaged member of K-State's basketball team despite not being on the floor, to less than 24 hours later, a statement is released saying he's gone from the team. Yeah, I, it was just a final decision made by the university president. Um, it seemed like, though he was disagreed with by, by anyone that I know, whether they're in the community, the fan base, the basketball program, the athletic department, the university, uh, you won't find too many people that supported this decision <laughs> and, and it's some of those people are also privy to all of the information that the president had. So it, it is interesting how he came to that conclusion when no one else really did that also knew the information that he had. You know, how it came to be where, where it's one thing and on Tuesday night and it's the next thing today is it was a decision made by the university president. Now, it is interesting that the university president makes this decision when everyone that I've spoken to or exchanged discourse with, whether they're in the community, the fan base, the basketball program, the university, the athletic department, didn't seem to have the same conclusion that he had. They thought that the, no, I didn't really speak to a lot of people that would have came to the same outcome that he did. And some of those people, not really me, I don't, I'm not subject or privy to the same information that they had. But some of the people that did have the same information as President Linton did not come to the same conclusion. So, you know, some people say, well, it doesn't make sense that he's doing this one man crusade. He might not be, but even if he's not, there were not a lot of people in his corner when he made this decision that also had the same information that he did, whether in the university basketball program or athletic department. Uh, the worst part is 
as we've just, you know, I've just discussed the last couple of minutes, it was a university president decision. But when the release was sent out on Wednesday night, sure didn't look like it. Sure looked like a guy hiding behind Gene Taylor. Yep. And I, I think this is one of those deals where maybe there are other people that are in support of President Linton's decision. I would imagine there are. I don't think you're I don't think as a university president, you, you make this decision on your own. You probably have people that you talk to and the, that you trust. They could be inside, you know, his his university office or they could be outside but people he trusts. And, and maybe they are telling him, hey, you, you don't want to touch this, like get away from it. But regardless of what that situation is, in the people that I would consider peers in terms of their pecking order and what they mean in the leadership positions at K-State, he's on an island here if Gene Taylor is not in support of it and Jerome Tang is not. Because, I mean, honestly... The two guys that that wield, I mean, we can act like in, in in this situation that university presidents they they are the highest member of of a school, but at the end of the day, we all know how how major schools work now. I mean, yes, President Linton has the overall say at K State; he is the president. But the people that really matter in terms of school with power, it's typically the AD, the basketball coach, and the football coach. And I don't think there are two guys with a higher approval rating at K-State right now than Jerome Tang and Gene Taylor. And so to be on an island there, that sets up some confusion from people. And like, you know, as, as I kind of said yesterday, I look at it like this. If you feel so strongly that Naquan Tomlin should not be a member of the basketball team, then he shouldn't, he shouldn't be a student at K-State anymore. But you know what Richard Linton hasn't done? and the academic side hasn't done is kick Naquan Tomlin out of school because that would open up a whole can of worms that they don't want to touch, but they can do the public facing thing and kick him off the basketball team and keep him from playing there. I think it's just a really tough situation and the transparency is lacking. And that also plays into the fact that like what we're talking about, it doesn't seem like this was Gene Taylor's decision or conclusion yet the statement that comes out saying Naquan Tomlin can't continue on the basketball team is attributed to Gene Taylor. He's having to, to, to kind of bite some bullets here for, for the president. And that's the same thing that Jerome Tang's been asked to do for the last month. Now he gets trotted out there every press conference and he gets asked, Hey, what's the update on Naquan Tomlin? What's the situation there? And he has to say, no changes, no changes, no changes. And now there have been changes, but, the the release that was sent out was this will be the only matter that K-State has or only comment on this matter that K-State has. It's just everybody has had to take responsibility or be the person that, that takes the heat except for what appears to be the guy that made the decision or was the driving factor behind the decision in President Linton. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, even if you, we can disagree with the outcome, but if we don't have all the information necessary or, or whatever, we can't really judge the outcome too much. Um, we can just say that, you know, the large majority of the people that had all the information necessary didn't think that he should be removed. And we, but we can also say the process and the conduct of the, person in charge of making this decision was embarrassing to be quite honest. I mean, it'd be like me if K-State Online made a controversial decision on how they wanted to carry out something. And obviously that's a decision that I make and people just start blasting it. And I'd be like, Mason, go say it's your fault. <laughs> me and Drew are right? just eating. Yeah. It yeah. Mason, Mason and I was Mason and Drew go tell the people, why we did it and say it was because you wanted it and not me. Um, my hands are clean, even though I was the one that did it. Like that's, you know, th that's the opposite of what a great leader is. So if you have the opposite of a great leader of your university, you should probably feel very uneasy uh, moving forward because if he's yeah. going to conduct himself this way, where he's going to make an unpopular singular decision and then force Gene Taylor to say it was, his decision, that that's a terrible leader. So, uh, I don't know. I think that's a scary situation moving forward. 
um, when you have a leader or a president willing to do that. I, I don't, I mean, again, I'm not even like scathing the outcome here. I'm scathing the conduct and behavior of the president and how he reached this conclusion yeah. and then how he threw it out to the general public. Yeah, there, there, there's a scenario here where maybe maybe Richard Linton is right. You know, again, we, we don't have all the the details or it's at least foggy for people. You're trying to piece together a bunch of what this guy heard and that guy heard to understand what actually happened with the Naquan Tomlin situation in Aggieville. Nobody has enough concrete details to to say one way or the other. They know what happened and they firmly know what the actual outcome should be. But the one thing that we do know is that even if this is the right result, it's the ba- it's a bad process of getting there. And it looks even worse when you have a lot of people in support of the reinstatement of Naquan Tomlin and one guy's digging his heels in and can't do anything. And I mean, to what you're talking about, the leadership side of things, number one, a good leader, they they take the heat for everything. Like that's what a leader does. I, think of a quarterback after a football game. Will Howard had to go up there a lot of times after games where it wasn't just his fault and except that it was his fault. Yeah. And that's what a leader is supposed to do here. And it's the total opposite where the decision you're actually making, you're deferring to the people that are working for you in Gene Taylor and Jerome Tang and whoever else. And the other thing that I'll say on this is people may act like, well, you know, it's just sports, whatever, you know, he'll, he's doing fine here. Up to this point, Richard Litton had been pretty well approved by people, I think, in the community because of, you know, the, the the insight and the support that he had for athletics. It seemed to be on a greater level than what uh, Kirk Schultz and then President Richard Myers had at different points. But the quickest way to sour your fan base and more importantly, your alumni base and the people that have money is to make an unpopular decision like this in athletics that go against what your athletic director and your head basketball coach that has unified this school like nobody else ever has and has become a bigger deal for this school than anybody since Bill Snyder. And to go against that, you're going to sour a lot of people. You're going to break their trust. You're probably going to break, in a bad way, the checks that keep coming into you from the people that have money. Certainly, this alum does not have the money to donate to K-State right now, uh, but the people that do, I guarantee you they're questioning their decisions right now. And this is not just a basketball one and done situation if Richard Linton thinks it. This is a headache that he is going to have to deal with for a long time. And at some point, he's going to have to address this because at the very least, even if we are all totally way off the mark here, and I don't think that we are, but say we are we're off the mark in putting the blame on Richard Linton and really, maybe Gene Taylor and Jerome Tang did have a change of opinion. I doubt it, but maybe they did. Then he, at the very least, is going to have to say something at some point to be like, hey, look, here's the deal. He has to set the record straight, or he has to kind of wear it for his guys. And the other, the, the final thing that I'll add in this little segmentation right here is that you know the reason why this is such a big deal to people and, and everything else is because they want their school to be represented in a positive way. And the the easiest way that that happens is with athletics. And so when K-State goes to the Elite Eight and Jerome Tang is going viral after every win and and there's a lot of positive buzz about K-State basketball, the alumni base loves that because they love K-State, they love Manhattan and everything that it provided to them. It's not that people just straight up love K-State basketball and football. They love everything about K-State. And When you go in and make decisions like this and you have operation that isn't very clear cut to people, it's going to sour them, especially when the result is putting Jerome Tang in a terrible situation and putting him on a side that, I mean, this could go down a scary path in terms of K-State retaining Jerome Tang. That's been the indication throughout this process is you strain a relationship like this, you don't know what can happen, especially with the way that money gets tossed around in college sports now and how eager programs are to get the quick fix and get the right guy in there. Jerome Tang's a hot commodity. And if you don't treat him the right way, especially in a situation where it seems like this isn't Jerome Tang just stepping out on his own and being like, I want a really good basketball player to come back to play for me. I think we know Jerome Tang's character is better than that. 
Jerome Tang wants Naquan Tomlin back on the team because he feels like he's paid his dues, he's done what's asked of him, and he trusts that he's not a bad guy. And I think at the end of the day, you don't want to mess up that relationship, but it's where it seems to be headed. Yeah, a good leader takes the heat when things go wrong and gives the credit to the people under him when things go right. Like you said, uh, President Linton did the opposite of that in this in this instance, when it comes to the Jerome Tang thing, look, there's no absolutes in life. Um, this doesn't guarantee anything one way or the other. So I don't think people need to get too meltdowning over that particular angle. But it is fair to acknowledge that, and I've spoken and interacted and exchanged dialogue with hundreds, thousands of coaches college coaches, and the one thing that they seek when they are go pursuing jobs, obviously one is compensation, fair compensation. Two is a situation where you have 100% support from the administration um, and your bosses, and you're all rowing and steering in the same direction. That's what guys – that's what coaches seek when pursuing jobs. That's what Jerome Tang thought he had. Now he's going to question that part of it. So when you don't have all your ducks in a row now and Kansas State doesn't, then you leave yourself potentially vulnerable to a problematic situation. And that's something that they're going to have to bear. Now, if the nuclear, if the negative nuclear result does happen, um, not saying that it will. I uh, that will make the approval rating of of one Richard Linton even worse. And because of the the affection and passion and pride and love that people all over Kansas State have for Jerome Tang, um, uh, Richard Linton would probably be in a very peculiar situation if that were to unfold. Now, what I will say is, and this is part of why it makes it a shame, in all my years covering the sport, not just basketball, football, you know, covering college sports, I've never seen one coach invest so much of his time and energy into not only his basketball program, but everything connected to it. Like Jerome Tang going to fraternity house after fraternity house, um, all of these, you know, just functions within the university. Anytime a student texts or calls him um, for help, uh, you know, he's done that. He helped someone get gas because they texted him because they had no one else to kind of go to. So uh, you have, that's the kind of guy that we're talking about here. I mean, I remember <laughs> he came back from the Elite Eight and he's in the airport terminal. He's the last guy to leave when the entire terminal is full of Kansas State fans greeting them after losing to Florida Atlantic. He was the last guy to leave because he signed every single autograph. Um, he's giving everything he's got for Kansas State to win and be the program that they've always believed that they should be. And now this happens. It definitely probably feels like for him that he's giving more than he's getting back. And – no coach really wants to stay in a situation where they think the powers that be within their own university are fighting against them. So, you know, between now and when those decisions have to happen, if they happen, um, there has to be some kind of real positive movement. But it just feels like that's a situation that's going to be hard to navigate. You hope it's not the hurdle that it could be. And that's really all they got, hope, because – you know, I, I I look at it this way. Well, at least the outcome, the decision notwithstanding, just by the way that he managed it, President Linton created a huge problem that was very avoidable. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the easiest way to sum this up, the reason why there's so much divisiveness right now, and really it's not like an even split, but it's it's basically everybody against Richard Linton at this point, is because you feel like the way you got to the result was poor. And 
not well communicated and not handled in an appropriate manner. Because ultimately, if you were going to say Naquan Tomlin can't be on the basketball team anymore, probably should have done it after the incident took place. What changed from the point that, that, that Naquan Tomlin got arrested in Aggieville to now? Because if anything, the circumstances around that arrest have gotten better since then in terms of the fact that, okay, he, he only ended up with a diversion. He's going through the process of completing that. The, the charges were not to, you know, an extreme level of any kind. Like, and he had not been on the bench with the basketball team. He had not been with them for certain activities. And two weeks ago, he returned to those activities. It was the Central Arkansas game the day before Thanksgiving. He's on the bench with the team. He was celebrating with them last night against Villanova. And so the fact that it got to this point, it's just it doesn't make a lot of sense in this situation. No. And and like I've said, you know, multiple times, but this is this is the way I view it. If you feel like Naquan Tomlin can't be on your basketball team and represent you there, then step up and put your name on it and don't let him be on the academic side either if you're Richard Linton. But step step up and put your name on it and don't make Gene Taylor fall on the sword as well. But Naquan Tomlin is still a student at Kansas State, and the expectation is that Naquan's going to graduate this month. Guess and guess what that means. And this is probably the final detail to cover. Naquan Tomlin can enter the transfer portal and play for somebody else starting next semester, which would be in January. Yep. And, and there is that, obviously and, and that could be a big twelve opponent. I mean okay, it's it's not impossible that Kansas State has to face Naquan Tomlin next month. That's how avoid avoidable this entire thing has. Now maybe he goes and instead pursues a professional career already. I don't know, but um, it's unfortunate uh, the way that this unfolded and the outcome notwithstanding. Again, I keep saying that because I don't know that I can say, you know, whatever. The outcome notwithstanding, it's just poor how it was handled. Yep. The uh, the process was bad no matter what the result ends up being, good or bad. Or at least and, be transparent enough to where you're on the same page with your basketball coach. Yeah. Yep. And, and just, you know, again – the be able to come out and say that, hey, look, uh, the we're we're not unified on this, but for what I think is the betterment of the university or whatever, uh, even if you like, people still wouldn't be happy, and it probably still wouldn't suffice. But the lack of anything from Richard Linton right now, when the protest was in front of his house yesterday on campus, it wasn't, you know, in front of Bramlage or the Ice Center. It wasn't in front of Gene Taylor's office. No, it, it was in front of the president's house. And at some point, Richard Linton needs to speak on this issue. Don't defer to an email sent out at 640 on Wednesday night attributing something to Gene Friday. Taylor. President went till Friday. Yeah. Um, uh, Probably didn't want to have to deal with Naquan being in Baton Rouge with the team and, and coming back. Yeah, maybe. Uh, last thing I'll say on this, because I'll try to end it with a positive note. Um or maybe a hope, a hopeful note, is that this entire situation, and and though obviously it wasn't enough to change the outcome, this entire situation at least can show to Jerome Tang how much literally everybody else is willing to galvanize around him. Yeah. Yep. I, I think you're going to get a ton of support for Jerome Tang and the basketball staff and everything else, and – uh, you're going to hope as a case stater that it's enough to to make even a, a strained relationship possibly between Tang and, and the president uh, something that Tang can overcome at least to, to stick around K-State and see what happens from here. Um, and we know what K-State looks like without Naquan Tomlin on the floor. And now we can we can stop talking in the what ifs or, you know, when Naquan comes back, this is what you get. What K-State is right now is close to the finished product in terms of what we'll see on the court. Quez Glover will still come along. He'll add some guard depth, but you're going to be riding with a lot of minutes from David David Gasson and Will McNair uh, out there because you're not getting a guy back. So uh, tough situation for K-State basketball and really K-State as a whole, no matter whatever uh, angle you're looking at it from. And now we just kind of wait and see uh, what the continued fallout ends up being. And Jerome Tang probably won't speak again until after the game Saturday afternoon in Baton Rouge. D.Y. will be down there. I'm sure it will be uh, an interesting conversation that goes on down there. And 
But uh, honestly, don't expect much from Jerome Tang because as the statement said that came out, like uh, this will be the only comment that will be issued from Kansas State University and K-State Athletics. So Jerome Tang would basically have to go rogue. Now, I wouldn't rule that out if he's he's that uh, displeased with the decision that has come about. But um, knowing his character and how he responds, I, I think that he'll probably just, you know, handle it in a, in a much classier manner than uh, what somebody <laughs> – uh, above him has decided to do with this circumstance. Two things, and one will lead into another show that we will have for you all. There's two people right now in the Kansas State sphere that have a chance to really cement their hero status going forward. One is Jerome Tang, obviously. If, yeah. if he says, despite the trash that I just had to deal with, with this whole thing and how I was treated despite everything that I've given to the university in spite of this president, I'm still going to keep, you know, hammering away at building a championship program at Kansas State. If so, if he stays through it all and despite that, I mean, he cements his hero status in Kansas State history. Avery Johnson can do the same thing. Yeah, no, it's 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 up to them and uh, we'll see how it plays out. It'll be a fascinating situation and uh, a lot more on that. Full coverage over on K-State Online. Just head over to On3. That's where you find it. Get signed up if you're not and uh, you can become a member of a pretty good K-State community that have had a lot of different conversations and angles to talk about with K-State Athletics the last two days. I'm sure that will continue and uh, plenty of coverage for myself, Derek, and then Drew as well as uh, we go through a, a an interesting time with K-State sports. This could be a week that makes or breaks K-State Athletics for years to come, and that is not an overstatement, uh, at least the way that I feel about it. So that will do it for us. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State Online.